Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will prove an important theorem related to cyclic groups. It turned out that all cyclic groups of the same order are isomorphic. We will need this theorem, for example, during the Hellman key exchange. Okay. Let's let's get into the theorem now. Let's G, let it, let us assume G is a cyclic group, and n is the order of the group. Okay, the number of elements the group is n, and let us also assume small g is the generator of the cyclic group. All right. So in order to prove that all cyclic groups are are isomorphic, um, I'm going to make use of this function f, and I define it between um, z n set of all numbers from uh, zero through n minus one including zero, including n minus one, right? That's how we define Zn group. And we are going to use an additive group. So I'm going to use a plus as an additive operator. And I map this to group G as follows. I take any A from, uh, say I, I pick an A from uh, Zn plus. How am I defining the function F? I define the function as f of a is equal to g power a. So this is the definition of the function f. Now, in order to prove two groups are isomorphic, I need to show this property. First property, f of a plus b, because the plus is the operator that we are going to use on the zn plus group, f of a times f of b, okay? What is the reason I'm using a plus on the left-hand side, but a multiplication on the right-hand side? That's because our group operator is plus for zn plus, right? And for z, I'm going to use, let's say, star as the group operator, okay? So I need to prove that f of a plus b is equal to f of a times f of b, however times is defined in the group G. And I need to also show f is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, let's prove this first. How do we go about doing this? It's simple. We take f of a plus b and we apply the function we defined. But when we add a and b, we may get out of n, so we need to do a mod n this because zn is from zero to n minus one only. So I will take a plus b, and I will do a mod n, right? We will make use of another theorem we learned earlier that g power a plus b mod n is same as g power a plus b, right? Because order of g, the element g is n since g generates the group g, okay? That's the reason I can skip the mod n on the top, okay? This is nothing but g power a times g power b. What is g power a? Which is nothing but f of a times f of b. So I'll use star to denote multiplication, okay? Star f of b. So you got the idea now that the function f is homomorphic at this point. We have to prove it's isomorphic, meaning we need to show it's one to one. How do we show one to one? This is f of a times f of b, okay, or a star. Remember um, how many elements are there in z n plus? n elements from zero through n minus one. Z, the group G also has n elements. That's the reason n is the order. So we have a function between two sets and they both have the same number of elements, okay? If such a function is defined, that function must be both one, one and on two, okay? Why is the case? Suppose let's assume there's a collusion, okay? For some reason, say f of a turned out to be equal to f of b. What can we say now? So this implies g power a is equal to g power b, right? Okay, which means a must be equal to b. This is, this is true in uh, group uh, exponent, okay? This implies a equal to b. All right, what we have shown is that f of a equal to f of b implies g power a equal to g power b, which implies a equal to b. So therefore we can conclude that function f is both one, one and two. On two comes from the fact that both g and plus and the group g are both same uh, size. So we have convinced ourselves that this function f is a, um, this function f is a isomorphic function. Okay, what it means for a function to be isomorphic, what is the big deal about? Okay, let me give you an example. Suppose uh, we take, say for example, a map from Z4. Z4 is made of numbers from zero, one, two, three, right? That's Z4. We know Z4 is a cyclic group under addition. This is Z4 plus, okay? Just the plus denotes the group operator is plus, okay? And we map this to uh, z, uh, z star five, okay? Our group G, I make it now to uh, say C star five, okay? We know Z star, Z star five is a cyclic group because for example, two is a generator of the group, okay? So what are the elements of Z star five? One, two, three, and four. These are the elements of the group Z, okay? So this is 
the group G. And now I'm going to take the generator small g to be two, which generates all the elements of the group G, okay. So where will zero go? Zero, if I go here, zero goes to um, two power zero is one. So zero goes to one always, okay. What about one? One will go to two, okay. What about two? Two will go to uh, two square, two square is four. So it will be here. What about uh, the three? Three will go to two power three, eight. Eight mod five is three. So they cross over, all right. This is the function F that I have defined between these two groups. So what is the big deal with isomorphism? Why is that interesting? It's interesting because let me show you an example. Suppose you would like to do, let's say F of uh, one plus three, okay? What can you do with the F of one plus three? F of uh, one plus three is nothing but f of uh, four, which is nothing but f of zero. Okay. What is f of zero? f of zero is one, right? What is f of one? f of one is two. f of three is uh, a three. So you have two times three is six. Six mod five is one. So you get a one here. As you can see, both are equal. Okay. This is basically the, the homomorphic property. All right. This particular construction is the foundation for Defiegelman key exchange. We know how to define an isomorphism from uh, one group to another group. Um, in, in this case, from Zn plus to Z star, to another group G, but we don't know how to do the reverse. We do know that a reverse exists, right? We do know if inverse exists from uh, because we've shown that a uh, function f is both one, one and one, two. But uh, f inverse is not easy to compute as far as we know. So from a computational perspective, we don't know how to go back from the group G, which uses the multiplicative operator in this case, back to Gn, Zn plus. We don't know how to do that. If we know how to do that, we are bas basically breaking Defi-Elman key exchange, which is the topic that I will discuss next. <clears throat> 